Okay, another cafe rat. Um, we will be joined today by Isabel. Let's see if she is able to join. There's always problems with this. I don't think it's ever worked the first time. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Oh my gosh, so this actually might work the first time. Let's see if she's joining. Send request. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this worked. Can you hear me okay? Let's see, the internet seems to be having some issues. Isabel, are you there? Let's see, something's wrong here. Hmm. Well, she left, we were close. Yeah, I feel like this interface could probably be a little better for us. Okay, did we make it? <laughs> I think we did. It's so, like, I'm just now um, convinced that it will never work the first time. Um, <laughs> so I just sit here awkwardly and chat with myself <laughs> um, while people just see me fumble around. Um, but thanks so much for joining uh, on our Instagram Live today. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for having, having me. me. Yeah, where are you calling or joining from? I, I am, am in, in Keystone, Keystone Colorado. Colorado. Ooh, nice. I'm a little jealous. Uh, I would love to be in the mountains right now. Um, but we can just jump right in because we don't have tons of time. But I would love, you know, love it if we could start off by talking about, you know, who you are, you know, what you're doing. Um, I know you through the Cycle Effect, which is, um, you know, a nonprofit in Colorado that the Pros Closet has just started partnering with, which is great. Um, but this is all about you and your story into cycling. And I would love, you know, if we could just, uh, if, you know, eventually we'll, we'll talk about, you know, your ideas on empowerment and equity and, you know, what, what brands can do to kind of make it better um, and what you kind of hope for the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, so go for it. Because your story is so interesting. You... Yeah, I'll let you go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm Isabel Rodriguez and I am from Jalisco, Mexico. I've been in the U.S. since I was eight years old. Um, and I've been in Summit County for about 10 years now. And currently I'm the program manager for the Cycle Effect in Summit County. And how did you get to college? Like, how did you find land in Colorado? Like how you were like, yep, Colorado is where I want to be. Well, it was like, really my choice. It was my parents' choice. Yeah. <laughs> they brought me here. They never asked us if we wanted to come. But um, my dad was here. He had a job. He was looking for housing to bring us over um, when I was a little kid. But then, then um, um, so, so I grew up here, went to school in Denver, Denver went to went college in Colorado Springs, Springs um, did, did my certification for um, elementary teaching. Oh my gosh. And then when, when I, finished I finished doing my student teaching, teaching, I was actually, I was actually already married. married. I got married during college. college. My husband is from, from Mexico. Mexico. I was 20, 20 when I got, when married. got married. Oh my really gosh. young. <laughs> 20 me at tw like thinking about me at 20 oh I wasn't even ready like three years ago let alone <laughs> 13 years ago so like yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that's crazy um and oh my gosh that's that's a whole different conversation that's so okay Mary it is but, my husband and I lived on campus, campus because I was two years into, into um college, college and so I had 2.5 two two years, years to go and so he and I lived on campus, campus together, together. Um, nice. And then when I finished my spring teaching, I, it was halfway through the school year. So we went down to Mexico because he's from down there as well. And I applied for jobs for teaching. And I had one of my really good friends, her mom worked at the Summit School District. And she said, you know, they're always hiring Spanish speaking teachers for the dual language program at Dillon Valley. And so I applied and I got the job. 
and I always really wanted to live in the mountains because I lived in Denver, I lived in Colorado Springs, but I thought, I want to go up there. Yeah, it's a totally different. It yeah, I feel like when people are like, oh, I live in Colorado, out of state people assume that we're all just in the mountains. Um, <laughs> we're all just skiing. And I'm like, no, it, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to fit through, tra through traffic on I-70 <laughs> if yeah. you want to come up to the mountains. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, you've moved, you moved to the mountains, you're in Delhi, you're doing this thing. How is that? No bikes I at this point. You're not into cycling, right? Not at all. I came, I came to, teach. to teach. I was yes. teaching second, second grade, grade in Spanish. Spanish. Um, it was my, my first, first year teaching. teaching. And, and, you know, you know at, at that time, time I had been in this been country, country for... for 24 years and I had never really felt as an immigrant like I belonged here in the state. Yeah. I always had a really hard time just really like that cultural identity conflict of I'm not Mexican enough to be go back to Mexico and I'm definitely not like American enough to have been in here. I went to an um, prep high school so, so private, private high, school, high school, I was, I was one, one out of three Latinos, Latinos in my graduating class. class. So, so I always, always felt, felt out of place. place. Um, but, but it also shaped me to find my right. own identity. Right, right. And I was convinced I was going to leave this country and find somewhere else to be. Well, I mean, and to be honest, like Colorado is not diverse. Like it, it's just not that diverse. Um, I would say, you know, in a lot of areas, it's, I mean, it's primarily white. So like I could, I totally feel for you about like not fitting in and like, God, that, especially in like an education like system, I think like that would just be like culturally very hard. I can only, I, I mean, I can't imagine even. It was. That, like, yeah. 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 And, and honestly, honestly, my family and I, my, my mom and my, and my two, two brothers, brothers and I at the time came um, undocumented. So we were here for five years um, with, before we could actually get our documents, our legal documents, to go to Mexico and come back. So I was eight. By the time I went back to Mexico for the first time, I was 13. I was a whole different person. And I rediscovered my family, my home in Mexico, and I felt robbed <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah I mean, but it just took like this amazing experience, experience of being mexican, mexican. <laughs> right right <laughs> like i can't imagine having that like split my like you're raised by your parents who obviously have had that and they like understand it there's like they get the traditions because they've experienced it and you're just like through them hearing stuff, you know, like you never experience it. And so it would just be such a shock to be like, whoa, 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 this is, <laughs> I could be doing this and mm -hmm. experiencing this and like, uh, yeah. so I mean, how did that shape you going back? Um, and then like coming back to the U S so, so I, I, after, after that, that, I spent, I spent like, like every, every summer, summer down, down in Mexico. Mexico. Okay. And when, when I graduated, graduated high school, high school um, I spent the summer down there by myself with all our families down there, but my parents and my brother stayed here. And I'm one out of six kids, and I'm the eldest and the only woman. So I have a handful of brothers. Oh my God. I bet dating was really hard. Well, no, I really wasn't into it. Yeah. Um, because I was. I was pretty busy doing school and really smart. trying. You're smart. When we came here, my dad told me, I was eight and I remember it clearly. You're going to have a lot of opportunities in this country. All I ask is that you take them. That's awesome. And that's what I did. When I was in eighth grade, I took the opportunity to apply to private high school, got in, took the opportunity to go through that process. I mean, I was in the jazz band playing, playing trumpet, trumpet, traveling, traveling around, around, and like <laughs> just doing everything that I could to gather as many tools yeah. as possible yeah. to be the best that I could be. So dating was not on my list. Oh my God, <laughs> I wish someone had told me that. That's so smart. Like, that's just such a downer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then when I met my husband, I met him that summer that I went down to Mexico, and I was like, what? Like, what is going on? Look, you are not in the plan. <laughs> yeah, you're screwing it up, bud. 
<laughs> and then you asked me to marry him, and I said, said now? <laughs> the timing just isn't good for me. Yeah, but, but really, he is, is my, my best, best friend. friend. Oh, and man. there's it's just, just like, like, he and I are really good team. team. And, and I couldn't, couldn't do, do everything, everything that I'm doing and that I have done without him. Oh, so, I love that. That's cute. He's That's a great huge like that. support behind a strong woman, woman which, which is, is really, really hard, hard to find. find. It is. It is. And when you do, you, it's just like, hang on to that person. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, okay. So now, okay, we'll fast forward. You're in Dylan. You're teaching second grade. Tell us, walk us through that and like the transition into cycle effect. Cause that was a process. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, remember I remember my, my first year teaching, teaching when, I when I walked into, into my, my classroom, classroom and I had, had students, students from, from Mexico, Mexico, of course, because we're a dual language, language program. 50% of our um, kids, their first language is Spanish. Okay. I have kids from El Salvador, Guatemala, all South America, Central America. And then, and then kids, kids from, from Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan Czech Republic, Republic. Wow. And, and I was, I was like, like this community is really diverse in like this, this little, little tiny, tiny space, space in the mountains. mountains. How does that happen? Super interesting. Yeah. Well, because, because a lot of our um, workforce, workforce is very diverse. diverse. Right, right, right. And so, so they are our local community. community. They're coming they're over to work in the resort. They find the other half, they stay. And so, we, we have, have a very, very really, really rich, rich and diverse, diverse community. community. And it was like the first time that I realized, oh, this community is asking me to share who I am, my to share my cultural identity, and to create a space for someone else to do that. Uh, that must like warm your heart to like I feel that. like I belonged yeah. for the first time in this country. <laughs> one that's, on one hand, that's like, stay. yeah, on one hand, that's like beautiful. On the other hand, it's just so sad that, you know, it was 24 years mm -hmm. uh, that it took. That's heartbreaking to feel yeah. out of place or like an imposter of some kind. So yeah, uh, my heart yeah, yeah. absolutely goes out to you for that. Yeah. yeah. So, so during, during my time, time teaching at Dillon Valley, Valley, I created, I created a dance, dance program. program. We were, we were dancing, dancing after, after school, school with fourth and fifth graders, graders. and then and we had moms say, say, can we dance too? too? And I was and like, why not? That, that means I can dance, dance too. too. Oh my God. We were I'm doing so traditional dances, dances from, from around, around the, world. the world. We started from Mexico, but then we had volunteers. We had a mom from Uzbekistan who wanted to teach a dance. We had a mom from Turkey. We had teachers from Spain teaching flamenco. We were doing it all. That's, that's, that was my other life, life before the cycle effect. <laughs> One, I love that. I'm, I had like a 12 year old try to teach me a TikTok dance the other day and it was painful. So <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Um, so I did not do it, uh, or at least well. So if you're still ever teaching dance, please, I will sign up. You'll, You'll have, have to check in with our cycle effect um, full-time full staff. staff. We yeah. had a meeting where yeah. I taught them how to admit a gig. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I would be so on board with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you went from dance all the way to mountain biking, which, like, in my head, whenever I look at, like, a really good mountain biker riding, I always feel like it's a bit of a dance. Like, it's, like, very – you're moving your body so much uh, that, it, it, that there is a flow and a rhythm and a dance to it. Um, so maybe you had a leg up. <laughs> Well, well, I'm actually, I'm, I'm learning, learning how to make, how to make that connection, connection because okay. it's definitely not natural for me. Okay. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, yeah, one of the, the last roles, roles I had at Dillon Valley, Valley was um, um, family liaison. Okay. So, so because, because I have this I have background of being an immigrant myself, myself of um, um, just seeing just what my what parents went through, through trying to get us through the education system, and then what my brothers and I have gone through, um, I have the ability to be able to connect with a lot of our families. Right, and right. It's, really, it's a privilege. And we had, in that school year, about 30 new families come to our school in like two months. Oh my God. And so we were trying to figure out what was happening. Yeah. And so I stepped into the role of sitting one-on-one -on -one -on -one with yeah. each family, listening, listening to the story. Uh, and there were some pretty strong stories. stories. And right. I sat there for an hour, hour and a half, 
just really holding their hand, listening, and then being able to see how we could support them to integrate their kids into our school. Yeah. That is probably one of the most rewarding roles that I've done. Yeah. And so after that, during a service at Dillon Community Church, they had a topic on immigration. Yeah. And our assistant principal was attending that service and he said, you know, it'd be great if you could come speak about your experience and about everything that you're learning. Um, because sometimes we feel like the immigration like process and experience is so foreign and we don't realize that it's our next door neighbor that it's the new kid in my son's class, that it's like really that close to us. Right. So I went to speak and before I said, you want me to get in front of a bunch of white people and talk about immigration? <laughs> <laughs> They're all like jotting down notes. They're like, really? Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. And just so happened, we had a Cycle Effect board member there. And um, he, listened he listened to my story. story. He, listened he listened to the work that I was doing through dance, the work that I was doing through um, the family liaison role. role. And he comes up to me and he says, are you getting paid for this? And I said, eh, you know, a little bit, not much. The dance is all volunteer. So I do it because I know we need it in our community. And he says, okay. We gotta figure yeah, out a way to get you paid because you have, have connections to this community that so many organizations are looking for, for. And, that and that you can't, you can't really train someone to do. to do. Right. So, so he, he calls, calls me like two days later and says, there is an opening at the cycle effect and I think you should apply. Yeah. And I said, what's the cycle effect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, it's a mountain bike aid program. I am not like I'm yeah. a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, you've got to really look into it because the mission statement is what you are doing yeah. through dance. It is it what, what you are doing, doing with the families. This is just a different avenue. Yeah. And so our mission is to empower young women. Yeah. I want to do that. 100%. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like there's just like nothing better than like you're there's such a formative age um, that I'm just like, don't don't get like weighed down by by things yet. Like, you got to be strong so that when you like enter the quote unquote real world where like things are quite rough, like your backbone is going to be so strong and you're going to be mm -hmm. so confident in yourself and your abilities that like nothing is keeping you down girl <laughs> like, well yeah, yeah. And, and it was, it was really, really really hard to decide, decide to, join to join the cycle, cycle. not yeah. because of the cycle effect, effect but because, but because I, had I had been in the community, community for eight years, years. I, had I had created this dance, dance program. program i was, I was working, working on creating a dance program k through fifth for our school i had been opening all these doors for myself creating my own roles and all of a sudden, I was going to have to put that aside and come join this organization and take their mission to move it forward. Yeah. And I was struggling. Yeah. But I think though I had to really focus on what is my purpose. And my I feel like my purpose is to share with our youth that you can really do a lot. <laughs> and to have them... I was doing that through dance, trying to create and nurture that identity, that cultural identity, because of the right. subjects that I had. And I thought, I can continue to do that and just have another avenue, another tool in my toolbox. Yeah. Why would I limit myself to just dance? Right. Totally. I mean, and I think, like, both, aside from, you know, the, the cultural aspect that dance can have, where you can, like, feel in touch with your culture or a different culture, um, both have like the ability of like getting like inside of your body basically and like feeling like strong like it's it's like a really like mind body kind of connection of like building confidence through in your body and then like that translates um, at least personally I think like that's also a really nice like linear a thing a tie that runs through 
I'm sorry, my dog is drinking, by the way. <laughs> if you hear him. Someone's hearing an echo, and I, I don't know how to fix that. I held my, my phone up, so I'm hoping that that's helping. Um, but I don't, I don't hear an echo. But so now that you're at the cycle effect, I mean, you didn't know how to ride a mountain bike. What did that process look like, um, kind of doing that? I had to really prepare, prepare myself, myself mentally, mentally because, because I knew it was going to be really hard. hard. Yeah. I've, I've never done it before. before. I'm, I'm not, not athletic. athletic. I'm, I'm not, not competitive. competitive. And I, I like, don't like speed. speed. <laughs> yeah. make up to go downhill. Same. Oh my God. Um, same though. <laughs> yeah. And I knew, and I knew that, that the falls were going to be guaranteed. guaranteed. So <laughs> I had to really prepare myself. But you know, what I'm, what learning, I'm learning is that, is that as, as immigrants, immigrants like, like we, we are, given are given the opportunities, opportunities to really, really build, build those like, like resilience muscles, muscles from, from very, very early on. Yeah. When, when I came, I came to this country, country I had zero, zero English. English. I did adapt, adapt to the whole system. system. I had I to had step, step up for my family, family my parents, my parents yeah. to translate because I was the first one, one who learned English, English. Uh, and wow. I, I had to do, do things that are a lot harder than yeah. mountain biking. Oh my god. Oh, like I have chills like when you say that. Um, it's just so, like I, I hate saying the word empowering again, but it's, it really is. It's like, oh my god, this person overcame literally every major obstacle uh, like their identity <laughs> to like their culture was like shook at the rock, like their foundation. And it's like, instead of, you know, getting really down about it or not trying, it was just like, no, this isn't like a, an offer. This isn't a, a moment where I can just like give up. It's a moment just to like move on and get over it, which I think is incredible and really says a lot about who you are and kind of how, um, I guess, persistent and motivated you are to do, to like carry out your mission, um, which I think is amazing. And, and it's, it's for, for the benefit, the benefit of, of the girls, girls that I'm trying, trying to, work to work with. with. Yeah. So when, when I, I recruit, recruit, I always, I always tell, tell them, them, you know, you know I'm, I'm learning, learning and I'm, I'm starting, starting for the very, very first time. time. I, was I was 32, 32 last year. year. So <laughs> if, <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. And, and you have done, done things that are harder. harder. This, this takes, takes effort, effort, but you're in control. control. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And so what are you doing now? Like what's what is like on tap for you or the cycle effect now? Um I would love to hear about that and then I would love to hear about like you know, if you have advice for anyone, um I think you're a great resource for people. You should get paid for your expertise. Absolutely. I think, you know, just, you know, how, what do you wish the, the cycling industry was doing better? Um, which I know is like 12 questions in one. Um, <laughs> good luck. How long are we here for? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're like, hold on. Is this a six hour Instagram live? I brought lunch with me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my coffee's running out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think. One of, One of the big things, things that we learned, learned as a team, team last year, year yep. was, was that, that mountain biking, biking is, is a whole culture, culture of self. Right. And, and we, we have, have talked talk about what, what it means, means to have people to enter into this space, space where when we, when we talk, talk about, about the dominant, dominant culture, culture, it's not it's about, about race. race. It's, it's about, about those norms that everyone is so familiar with. Right. But then, but then someone, someone else comes, comes in, in and you have, have no idea, idea what those, those are. are. Okay. How do you let them know what those are? And how do you um, create that space for that person who knows absolutely nothing to feel comfortable to ask all the questions needed right. and to walk them through, for example, what's a bid? Like, I remember yeah. that. Like, thinking. <laughs> What is what a bib? Because all I know is that a baby you put a bib on. <laughs> right. Totally. And it's just like stuff that we, we take it for granted that like, mm -hmm. oh, everyone knows what this is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, and so to be able, able to go, go through that, that as an organization, organization with, with the, the leadership, leadership team and walk someone through myself, myself 
really helped us understand what it is that we need to do to help welcome our athletes who were inviting to try this for the very first time. Yeah. And to me, it's really important to have that type of leadership. Yeah. To, I think a lot, a lot of organizations, what we do is, or what they do really, is ask me for advice. Right. When really what we should be doing is give them the paid role. A hundred percent. And let them design and let them have agency in what the program looks like, which is what really I have been able to do in the last year to be able to design a program for the people we are trying to serve. Yeah, I think, and then that just requires uh, you know, you, when you start an organization, obviously you have a mission, but there is a point where you need to have, you need to be able to listen and respond to what people want. Um, and I think that takes a certain type of organization and a group of people to be like, okay, here's our goal. But like, now we just have to sit back and listen and take notes and change and get better and keep adjusting. Um, because I mean, the cycle effect has grown so much and like, you know, I think one thing that I found super interesting is you've created this community for young women, but now all the moms see it. And so now like all the moms want to be a part of it, which I think is amazing. And like the dads. And so uh, you've created this thing where it's like now organically, it's, it's kind of happening that like you're encouraging all of these people to get on bikes, which I think is I mean, it's wonderful. It's not just, it's beyond bikes at this point. It's like bonding, it's strength, it's like life skills, which I think is just so wonderful. Yeah, and I wish it was more organically because yeah. I think what we don't see is all the intentional work yeah. behind that that takes for that to become that way. Yeah. So one of the things that I worked on last year and this year was really building up a diverse team of coaches because if they are going to be the ones to working one-on-one -on -one with our athletes, we need to have a vast um, opportunities of our athletes to connect, yeah. to feel represented, to feel like they can connect to every individual in so many different ways. So our team of coaches is diverse in language, in age, in biking experience, in um, sexual orientation. We have three males. Um, so for our girls to come in and our families to come in and say, oh, look, that coach just approached me He's speaking Spanish. Or that coach just approached me and she's learning how to bike for the first time. Yeah. Or that coach I worked with today, you know, she's going through the same thing that I'm going through. Um, it gives them a sense of, okay, this, this is inclusive. This is for all of us. It's yeah. not just for experienced mountain bikers. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of goes back to, I mean, you know, when you were saying that, you know, it took 24 years to feel like you fit in and like people understood you you've created a space for people that, you know, they don't, they might not have to wait 24 years for these girls. It's like, we're going to meet you where you are mm -hmm. and we're going to, we're going to come to you. So you feel welcome, you feel heard and like, you're not alone. <laughs> Cause that, that would be, you know, that's, that's just not the point of most things. But I mean, in cycling, I think like the reason why I personally, I'm here. It's because the community, like, I, I like that. Like, that's why I'm still here. And that's like the best part about it. And thinking about not having that, I'm like, I would never, I would never have kept around, done, like done this. If I had no friends, no people to like ride with, it's just, it's not that, it's not that awesome. Um, right. And it takes a while to get to that point. Totally. Because I remember um, our executive director says, you know, mountain biking is a style of like life, it's a way of life. So I want you to have your bike with you all the time so you can ride it whenever you want to. And I, first I was like, right. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab my bike and go for a ride on my own. <laughs> like, hold up, let's take some steps back. 
<laughs> yeah. But I loved, like, I go to every practice that I can because I ride with the girls, I ride with our coaches, I ride with the team because it's that community feeling that is just, I mean, you're not going to have that anywhere else. So try to do that as much as possible. And it energizes me. I would say at this point, oh, now I go and write a Bible because awesome. I love it. And I didn't think I was going to like it that much, but it's, it's been really a great experience. Yeah. I mean, people make or break the experience. And I think speaking like totally personally, I got like super jaded on the cycling industry. And I was like, God, I just, I don't even like, I don't like like the negativity, the judgment, like, and a lot had to do with like social media. Like I was like, this just feels very negative and not why I signed up. And that's like actually part of the reason why I created uh, the cycle or the cafe ride. Cause I was like, I need to like reset and like hear stories about good people doing good things. And so in a selfish way, like I, I was just like, I need to change my community around me because I'm becoming, I, I don't feel like I want to be a part of it anymore. Um, so I just, I, on my own personal level, I get just how important, you know, your extended family is. I mean, that's what our community ultimately is. Um, so it's just so nice to have someone like you building this, um, and being a part of it. Like you've got, you've got skin in the game. So mm -hmm. you're, you're a part of the community, which I love. Um, and then, you know, before we go, is there anything else that you want to share about yourself or the cycle effect or your hopes, dreams, your dance lessons? <laughs> well, I did want to mention something else because you did ask me those 17 questions before. Yeah. Um, just about equity and yes. I've been learning a lot about hiring. Yeah. Um, as I would love to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but also just through my own experience of the cycle effect is an example of an organization who yeah. really thinks about what are the skills, um, the skill set that they're looking for in a person, and then realize that there are so many other skills that can be learned, right. like the mountain biking, yep. and then the ones that cannot be easily learned, yeah. which is the community connection. And to be able to balance that out and say, you know, we're going to take a risk on Isabel. Because she can learn the mountain biking. Right. And she's going to bring all this to the organization that we're not going to easily find. And so when you think about hiring and you want to create those um, places of inclusion and those places where you're thinking equity is your lens, what are those skills that you are not going to find easily? Right. Absolutely. And then what are the ones that are so teachable? Yeah. Yeah. Like those hard skills of just like, yeah, how to mountain bike, like how to make an Excel spread, you know, whatever it is. It's like, we can teach you that, but like your X amount of years of experience of like living a certain life, you know, whatever, like we, we, we can't like teach you that mm -hmm. and we can't experience. So it's just like, it's great to know that, you know, that's the lens that you're going through with hiring. And I think a lot of brands, especially in the outdoor industry, like they need to accept and realize that, like stop looking for, you know, the whatever mechanic with 10 years of experience. It's like, we can teach you. Like if we are committed to, you know, diversifying things, it's like we need to take on the role of teacher at that point uh, for mm -hmm. certain skills, so. And then the role of everything that you can also learn. From that individual a hundred percent like <laughs> yeah oh my god absolutely i think everyone's experience like it's so important to listen i think listening is just one of the biggest things that everyone can learn to do it's just like if someone is speaking up just like listen <laughs> let them talk about their experience listen and like let it sink in and absorb and if it makes makes you feel uncomfortable that's not their fault like you need to evaluate like why, why is, you know, that person's experience making me feel uncomfortable or, you know, like, what can I learn from this? Um, and I think listening is a hard skill for some people to learn. <laughs> Loaf, do not bark. Sorry, my dog's barking. But is there anything else 
you want to say before we head out of here? So, so yeah, yeah, I talked I to my coaches, coaches about the two-way two bridge. bridge. Yeah, we're, we're trying, trying to bring, to bring people, people or athletes, athletes or young women over to the mountain biking, biking world. world. Yep. We're trying to get them to cross that bridge. Yeah. We also have to cross the bridge the other way to meet them. Yeah. And then we can meet halfway at some point. But we have to be able to go both ways and to be able to know that we have a lot to teach them, but be humble enough to know that they also have a lot to teach us. hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. That's amazing. I think, yeah. I think that's awesome. I think if you're, if you're not learning, something's probably wrong, <laughs> mm-hmm. but thank you so much for joining, um, and sharing your story and like being vulnerable and talking about this. I think it's imp- super important and just, I, I mean, like, just thank you. Thank you so much for doing so much for women cycling, you know, just, just making our sport better, um, and making the lives of, so many people so much richer and more fulfilled like I, I don't think that that I can't like you can't put that into words like the the gratitude for that so um hopefully everyone appreciates all of the work you're doing I know I certainly am it's it's really um inspiring on a lot of levels thank you thank you for opening up the space for the opportunity to share my story and, yeah and put that highlight on what we're doing over here yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, I think I'll try to like make sure we link to the cycle effect in like a blog. Like we just put out that video, but, you know, the cycle effect is such a great organization and you are such a great resource. You know, I think, you know, people should just like check it out. Go, go see what they're up to. They're doing good things. Yep. yep. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, have a good rest of your day. Hopefully you can get out and ride. Oh, we're, we're racing. racing. Ooh. And I might be doing my first race ever. So <laughs> it's let me know how it goes. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. I will. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.